Are you having a good Sabbath so far? Before I present today's word, I would just like to um, read this short story. Yes, thank you. Yeah, this story is about a pastor who is also a writer. Now, this may help us who share the word or the message of God to acknowledge that we are weak vessels and we're depending on God's strength to do the work that we do. And the story is that in, in, 20, in 2016, after finishing a seminar of a youth congress, a boy asks the pastor to sign a copy of his book. The book was uh, Visit My Wall. While he was signing, he took the opportunity to ask him this question. Pastor, I just finished reading your book and I've asked myself, do you put everything you have written into practice? Wow. After thinking for a few seconds, he replied, no. Unfortunately, I don't always put everything I read into practice. Rather, I write to motivate myself to live up to the truth I shared. He thinks perhaps his answer troubled the young man. So since he probably expected to hear that there was harmony between my life and my writing, however I decided to respond by saying what I am, a human being full of infinite and irritating imperfections. He said to the young student, if we look at the scripture, in the second letter to the Corinthians, Paul declares that we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. Then he added that we are like clay vessels, not like bronze or silver vase. The clay vessels are weak and they break easily, and they are disposable. But what is surprising is that the Lord decided to place his treasure in us, clay vessels, so that the excellence of power and what is the treasure? The treasure is the gospel of salvation. The power is not in us, but in God who has given us the extraordinary privilege of sharing his word. If our work contributes to building someone up, it is not because we are strong and worthy, but because God by his grace has decided to use us despite of our worthiness unworthiness, I'm sorry. The greatest does not lie in the messenger, but in the message of the gospel. That is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. Then he continues by saying, like Moses, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and Paul, any of us can feel that we do not measure upon the solemn calling of the calling we have, the solemn calling we have received in Christ, that our life reflects great weakness. If that is your experience, behold the divine promise. And he quoted Exodus 4.12. 
I will be with you when you speak, and I'll teach you what to say. I just wanted to share this with you because uh, I just want to remind you that I am a weak and imperfect vessel, need of God's strength to mold me to his satisfaction. Okay? So, let's get into today's message. I advise you to buckle up. I'm taking you into a bumpy ride, okay? Are you ready? Today is one day that no one is allowed to sleep. Okay? If, I, if you're sleeping, I'll call your name. <clears throat> I think I know everyone named here, so I'll call your name. And don't get mad at me. Just, I don't want you sleeping. This is important. Okay? The title for today is For Me of the Holy Spirit. So what is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? One of the sin mentions in scripture that can really strike into the heart of people fear is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus talked about this, the word he used were indeed frightening. And he says, Wherefore I said unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. It's Matthew 12, 31, 32. Okay. So what does blasphemy of the Holy Spirit mean? There are truly serious words which should be taken very lightly, which should not be taken very lightly. However, I believe there are two important questions in regard of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. One of them is, what is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? And the other question is, as a Christian, do you need to worry about committing this unforgivable sin? All right, let's answer these questions and learn more as we look into this very important topic of blasphemy. Very good, everybody's awake so far, okay. In general, the word blasphemy, according to Miriam Webster, means the act of insulting or showing disrespect or lack of reverence of God, for God. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when you take the true work of the Holy Spirit and you speak evil of it, crediting his work to Satan. I don't believe this is a one-time thing, right? But it's an ongoing rejection of the work of the Holy Spirit over and over again, attributing his precious work to Satan. When Jesus addressed this topic, he was responding to what the Pharisees had actually done earlier in this chapter. 
This is what happened. When they brought him a, a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see, and all people was amazed and said, could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard, they said, it is only by Belzebub, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Belzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Matthew 12, 22 to 24. The Pharisees, by their words, were denying the true work of the Holy Spirit. Even though Jesus was operating under the power of the Holy Spirit, the Pharisees was giving credit to his work to Belzebub. Belzebub is another word for Satan. Well, by doing so, he was blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So you may be asking yourself, why is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit an unforgivable sin? In Matthew 12, Jesus says that whosoever commit the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. However, knowing that doesn't really address the question of why this sin is unforgivable. You could say it because Jesus said. But I think there's more, there's more to this answer. So now, to help you understand the why, you must recognize how the Holy Spirit works in the heart of an unbeliever. Now, the reason why I'm focusing on unbelievers is because I don't believe that a Christian, or I should say is a true believer, can commit this sin. But we'll talk more about this later. Let's look at how the Holy Spirit works, and you will understand why the person who commits this sin can never receive forgiveness. According to John 16, 8 and 9, one of the primary work of the Holy Spirit is to convict the world of sin. You with me so far? Here's what Jesus said. And when he comes, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not me. The he Jesus is talking about here is about the Holy Spirit. When a person does not know Jesus as the Savior, the primary work of the Holy Spirit in that person's heart is to convict them of the sin and point them to Christ. With, with the hope that they will turn to Christ for salvation. Now in John 6, 44 says that no one comes to Christ unless the Father draws them. The Father draws them to the work of the Holy Spirit, right? But if someone constantly rejects the Holy Spirit and speak evil about him, attributing his work to Satan, here is what's happening. They are rejecting the only one who can convict them of sin and move them toward repentance. 
Consider how Matthew 12, 31, 32 reads in the, in the Message Bible. There's nothing done or said that can be forgiven. But if you deliberately persist in your slanders against God's spirit, you are rejecting the very one who forgives. If you reject the Son of Man out of some misunderstanding, the Holy Spirit can forgive you. But when you reject the Holy Spirit, you are chopping a branch you are sitting on. Cut off your own perversity, all connection with the one who could forgive. All right. It's kind of something a little complicated. Let's summarize this. Why sin is unforgivable. All sin can be forgiven. We already know that, right? However, the key to forgiveness is repentance. The key to repentance is conviction. The source of conviction is the Holy Spirit. So when a person blasphemy, slanders, and rejects the true work of the Holy Spirit, they, connect, they are disconnecting their source of conviction. Now, when this happens, there is nothing or no one who will move that person to repentance. And without repentance, there can be no forgiveness. Now, in essence, the reason why they won't be forgiven is because they can never come to the place where they can ask for it. Because they have rejected the Holy Spirit. They have cut themselves off from the one who can lead them to repentance. Are we clear on that? Okay. By the way, the person who falls into this sin will probably not even know that they are beyond repentance and forgiveness. Also remember this, that, that this sin was not limited just to Bible times. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is still happening today. There are people in our world who are blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Whether they realize it, whether they have realized the severity of their action, and the consequences attached to it. But it's sad to say that this is still going on today. Now, many are confused if blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is different from talking of taking the Lord's name in vain or swearing. Hmm. Though they can appear to be similar, there is a difference between taking the Lord's name in vain and blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. Because to take the Lord's name in vain is when you do not show proper reverence for who God is, which is similar to blasphemy. The difference between the two lies in the heart and the will. Even though people who take the Lord's name in vain, they often do so willingly. It is unusual to burn out of their ignorance. Generally speaking, they have never had a true revelation of who God is. When someone has a true revelation of God, who God is, it's very difficult to take his name in vain. Why? Why is that? 
because you develop a deep reverence to him. Think about the centurion in, in Matthew 27 <clears throat> when Jesus died. The earthquake happened and he proclaimed, surely this was the son of God. Now this revelation is what creates the reverence. The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is different because it is not an act of ignorance. It is an act of willful rebellion. You must choose to blaspheme, slander, or reject the work of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember the Pharisee I mentioned earlier? They saw the miraculous power of God at work because they saw the demon possessed boy completely hid. The demon was cast out and the boy was able to, able to speak and to see. There was no denying of the power of God. In despite of that, they willfully decide to attribute that work to Satan. Now, this was not an act of ignorance. They knew exactly what they was doing. That's why blasphemy of the Holy Spirit has to be an act of the will, not a passing ignorance. In other words, you cannot, I'm sorry, in other words, you can do it by accident. You can't do it by accident. It is an ongoing choice. Am I clear? Yeah. Or you still have questions? Okay. I don't know if any one of you have seen that ad on TV <clears throat> by Ron Regan. He said he's a, an atheist and he wants to keep religion out of the government. And at the end of his ad, he says, I'm a long time atheist and I'm not afraid to burn in hell. Have you seen that ad? When you're watching 60 Minutes, you will see that ad. That's one of my favorite shows. Now, my question is, do you think he commit the unforgivable sin? Anyone could answer. No. Huh? Hmm? What? Yeah. But he willfully doing it, but he's not, he's not cursing the, 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 uh, the Holy Spirit. I personally, I might be wrong, but I personally don't think he commit this unforgivable sin. He have the opportunity to ask for forgiveness. If he die without repentance, then I think he commit the, the unpardonable sin, but who knows, it's God is who gave the, uh, the last word, right? To repent, you see, that's why, that's why I'm saying I don't think he committed yet. If he die without repentance, then he is in trouble. All right, okay. I'm happy you guys are awake, good. Huh?
What do you think? As a Christian, do you need to worry about committing blasphemy? Here is good news. As though this ride is still a little bumpy, as a Christian, there is many sins you may fall victim to. In my opinion, this is not one of them. Let me explain why. Jesus made a promise to all his disciples in John 14, 16, and 17. And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. Who the world cannot receive because it see it not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Are we clear there, right? When you gave your life to Christ, God gave you the Holy Spirit to live and to dwell in your heart. This is a requirement to be a child of God. Now, if the Spirit of God is living in your heart, then the Spirit of God will not deny, slander, or attribute his own work to Satan. Earlier when Jesus was confronted, the Pharisees, who attribute his work to Satan, Jesus said this to them. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How can his kingdom stand? Matthew 12, 26. The same thing is true of the Holy Spirit. He is not divided against himself. He will not deny or blasphemy his own work, and since he lives in you, he will keep you from doing the same. Therefore, you don't have to worry about committing this sin. And I hope I put some kind of ease in your heart this morning. Huh? Because I'm telling you, I was so scared when I hear of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. There is, there is always a healthy fear about the, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. However, if you are in Christ, you don't have to be afraid. As grievous and dangerous as this sin is, as long as you remain connected to Christ, you will be fine. Remember, the Holy Spirit lives in you, and, and he will keep you from falling into this sin. So if he was worrying, stop worrying about blaspheming. Focus instead of building and growing your relationship with Christ as the Holy Spirit helps you to do that. And if you do that, you will never blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Another thing that you need to be careful of is obedient to God and his law. And if for any reason you fall, you know you have an advocate that is always willing to forgive you as long as your repentance is sincere. I think that a sin without repentance is as bad as blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. What do you think? My brethren, may God bless you. And if you are already blessed, stay blessed.